Hello guys and welcome to another installment of Innovate Computers and Technology. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at this Bebon Call, Bebon Call, Bebon Call. Uh, I honestly guys have absolutely no idea how to pronounce this, so I'm just gonna go with Bebon Call for now. Um, I'm gonna be butchering this the entire time, but today we're gonna to be taking a look at this Bebon Call uh, Bluetooth controller. Now I was interested in this because a couple months ago I went on a car trip, I brought my Nexus 7 and the Xbox 360 controller to play a couple games with, and it was just an absolute pain in the butt because with the Xbox 360 controller I had a lot of extra cable just laying around everywhere, I had to bring an adapter, and it just just plain sucked. So I was really interested in checking out a solution like this, uh, a Bluetooth controller where you can just stick your device right in the middle and use it as a normal game controller. Uh, no wires or anything like that. You know, it's fully adjustable. It has built-in batteries. So, you know, the concept sounded super convenient. So today we're going to see if it is super convenient and if it's easy to use and if the quality is any good. Now, I do have high expectations as far as quality is concerned uh, because there is a pretty Pretty hefty price tag associated with this little Bluetooth controller that I have in front of me. Uh, this model is $39.99 on Amazon. If you guys want to check it out, the link will be in the description. They also have a couple cheaper models for around $17. So uh, maybe if you want a smaller solution, you can look at that as well. But today, we're going to be taking a look at the more expensive one. Now, just something a little bit strange about this. I noticed when they emailed me to review this controller, they really stressed on the point that this is only for Android 3.0 or newer and as you can see it has only four Android stamped up on the box right here and that was a good thing for me because I don't have any iOS devices don't have the money for iOS devices um, and so I wouldn't be able to do any iOS testing and if it's solely intended for Android I wouldn't need to but as you can see right on the bottom of the box it says that it's also for iPads and iPhones and it also says that on the sides as well so I'm kind of confused I think they might just be using a general box for all their products, the ones that are intended for Android and iOS. Um, so I'm just gonna make that assumption. We will only be testing this out with Android today because once again, I do not have any iOS devices. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this thing out of the box. I'm not really sure where to start here. I'm gonna start from the bottom. I'm gonna tear this thing open. There we go, that wasn't too hard. We'll go ahead and pull the controller out. There we go, and it looks like right below that we have a user manual, which I will probably have to read to see how uh, we adjust everything and uh, situate the Bluetooth and all that good stuff. And then looks like we have a warranty card, etc., etc. Not really too exciting. I'm gonna pull this little cutout right here. We're gonna pull the controller out of the box. Yes, I enjoy narrating myself. It's so much fun. All right, and you know, first impressions of the controller actually aren't too bad. I've actually just been sitting here for the past 20 minutes messing around with the controller and taking a look at the quick start guide, which does have quite a bit of interesting information in it. So if you guys want to check it out, I will scan it in and put the link to it in the description. As far as quality is concerned, it's not quite on par with an official uh, console controller like the Xbox 360 controller that I have out right on top of it. Now, this is for size comparison and also for quality comparison. You know, if I push down here, there is a little bit of flex in the frame. It is a little bit light for its size, which might be a good thing or a bad thing depending on how you're looking at it. If you're traveling with this, you probably want it to be a little bit on the lighter side, but when you pick it up in your hands, it does feel uh, a tad bit cheap. As far as the buttons are concerned, they feel alright. As you can see, we have four, uh, I guess you would say, fire buttons. We have two joysticks right here which do go down and click, like so. Uh, we have a directional pad. We have a right trigger and a left trigger and a right bumper and a left bumper and some functional buttons down on the sides right here. Now it's not charged up yet. I still have to uh, grab the USB cable, plug it into my PC and charge up the 350 milliamp hour battery inside this thing, which is advertised to last eh, anywhere between four to eight hours. And I had to zoom out right there just to show you guys how far this thing can extend. It can accommodate devices all the way up to 10.6 inches in length. I'll demonstrate that right now. So I'll pull out this side. This side does lock into place by a little lock slider right here. So we'll just push that down and that side is now locked. And the other side is spring-loaded and that gives us the rest of the length So we'll pull it out right now and you put your device in there and the spring-loaded side presses down on it This side is locked in place and your device is secured and I'll demonstrate that right now So uh, I have two devices right in front of me. We have a Nexus 7 and a Samsung Galaxy S4 So I'm gonna take my Nexus 7. I'm just gonna take it here We're going to slide it into one of the sides and by the way the inner sides are rubber-coated so it's not gonna scratch up the sides 
sides of your device. Uh, same thing with the bottom right here. This is rubber coated, so it's not going to scratch up the bottom of your device. Um, so we're just going to slide in our tablet like so. We're going to unlock the adjustment bar and we're going to lock it in place again. Slide it like so. Make sure it's nice and tight. Lock it in place and we are good to go. As you can see, that Nexus 7 is not going anywhere. As you can see, that was super easy. No problem mounting that Nexus 7 into the controller. And if I want to pull it out, I can actually just take advantage of the spring loaded side and do that. And with the Samsung Galaxy S4, we're going to go through the same motions. Uh, this one's a little bit trickier because it does have a case on it and that makes it a little bit thicker, uh, which makes it a little bit harder to get it into the controller. Please keep that in mind. If your phone has a case on it, it might complicate things as far as fitting it into the controller. You might have to take the case off or you might just have to uh, live with the fact that's not going to be as secure as it would be without a case on. Uh, same thing with the Samsung Galaxy S4. Same steps. Unlock it, close it, and as you can see, it's a little bit more difficult to get that uh, secured. So that's all nice and tight. We're going to lock it, and that is ready to go. But what if you have a phone that's pretty small? So I'm going to pull this back out and show you guys what I'm talking about. So we're going to move this off to the side, and I have, I think this is a ZTE-1 or something like that, just a run-of-the-mill track phone. This is just a little bit smaller than what the controller can accommodate for. It uh, wiggles around here, and it could possibly fall out if you were to hold it vertically. Well, what do you do in that case? Well, you just pull out this little arm, and you place the phone down into the arm, and that works just fine. So don't worry if you have a device that is smaller than the uh, 4.5 inch length right here. Uh, you can still use it with this controller. It's just not going to be as secure as it would be uh, if you're using something a little bit larger like the Samsung Galaxy S4 where it actually locks into place and holds it there. Um, with something a little bit smaller, you know, you're just going to have to kind of lay it on top of that arm. Charging this is going to be pretty straightforward. There is a charging port located under one of the grips right here. So all you're going to do is grab the USB cable, plug it into a 5 volt source, and plug the other end into the controller. As you can see, the charging light is now blinking, and now we have to wait for it to charge. All right, so I have to say this is actually working really well, a lot better than I expected. It's really easy to set this thing up. Um, you set it up just like any other Bluetooth device, and I will demonstrate the uh, syncing process in just a minute after I'm done messing around with this. But this is Asphalt 8, and as you can see, I am playing it with the game controller. Of course, we're, uh, we'll take a look at this thing. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, man, did I just get taken down? No, I took someone else down, I think. Uh, as you can see, I'm not the greatest at this game. And of course, we will play a couple other games using this controller. I just wanted to demo this one first uh, for no reason at all. You know, I, I just got on and I'm like, all right, I'm going to turn the camera on and we're going to play this one. Whoa. Oh, my goodness. The syncing process is pretty straightforward. All we're going to do now is hold down the home button on the controller until this gamepad light starts blinking at a rate of four blinks per second. So not quite yet. You got to wait for it to get a bit faster. There we go. And now we can turn on the Bluetooth on our device. I'm going to go into the Bluetooth menu. Well, once it is unlocked, we're going to go into our Bluetooth menu. I'm going to hit scan. And as you can see, it has found the gamepad. I'm just going to click on it. It's pairing. And come on. And we're good to go now. As you can see, the gamepad light is now solid. So I'm just going to scroll down here using the gamepad and I'm going to close out this menu. Now concerning responsiveness, I wasn't really sure what to expect and I'm pleasantly surprised because the response is almost instant. As you can see, I'll move over here, move over there. You know, it, there's not much delay in that at all. I, I can't even tell that I'm using a wireless Bluetooth controller. All right, what in the world am I doing? As you can see, I just downloaded this game and installed it for the demo purpose. <laughs> and I've, I've never played this before. Whoa, whoa, what's going on there?
And now for a personal favorite of mine. Guess what, guys? This thing works with my boy, the Game Boy emulator. As you can see, I have Pokemon Red up now, and I am playing it using this game controller. Oh, man, this is, this is awesome. Oh, man, I feel like I'm just going to be stuck on this all day. You guys have no idea how much I enjoy this. And this is so much more convenient than hooking up the Xbox 360 controller with all of those wires. I mean, it's a nice, clean setup, super convenient, super easy to use. I, I'm, I'm really liking it. Quality uh, could be better, you know. For 39 bucks, quality could definitely be a tad bit better. Uh, it's structurally sound, but it's not like it's built like a rock or anything. And all, I feel like this is a pretty decent Bluetooth game controller. It's really easy to set up, really responsive. It's compatible with a ton of devices thanks to that really flexible design. It does feel Feel good to use however for something in this price range I think quality could be a bit better uh, it's just a tad bit flimsy you know there, there's some room for improvement there but besides that it works pretty well as a controller which is what it is intended to do so that's gonna be about it for this video guys if you have any questions comments or concerns you can go ahead and post a comment in the comment section don't forget to drop a like on this video if you didn't like this video please tell me why uh, don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel if you want to support me you can use my Amazon or eBay affiliate links you can also support me by checking out my patreon and don't forget to drop a like on the facebook page thanks for watching once again guys i will see you in the next installment of a computers and technology